Welcome to the Debt Rebel Podcast, where we discuss the ins and outs of personal finance for families so you can eliminate the burden of debt, create financial margins, and learn a new way to interact with your money. I'm your host, Jules the Budget Nerd, and I have been in your shoes. My husband and I have paid off over $107,000 in consumer debt until we finally threw in the towel and decided it wasn't for us. Throughout our journey, we learned another way to do life without debt, and that's my hope for you. You can learn more about our story and see full show notes on my website, JulesTheBudgetNerd.com. That's J-E-W-L-Z, TheBudgetNerd.com. Now let's dive into today's episode. All right, Debt Rebels, I am so excited. We have a special guest on the show today, fellow coach and also podcaster. We have Ashley Malik. She's a health and wellness coach. And I love what she does because she helps families get some time back, but also put food on the table and cook once, twice, just kind of whatever works for your schedule. She's got some great tips. So without further ado, Ashley, thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. Yay. Thanks, Julian. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I went through your family fork. Um, your your family fork framework. And I want you to tell us a little bit more about that, a little bit more about who you are, why you do what you do, and um, some great tips for our listeners. So yeah, absolutely. I like Julian said, I am a health and wellness coach, and I really specialize in anti inflammatory nutrition. I think that all women over the age of 35 should be eating an anti inflammatory diet. But I'm also a mom, I was a single mom for a long time. And I understand when you hear anti-inflammatory diet, most people think it's like, I have to take this out and that out and I have to eat all organic and it's going to be more expensive. And so years ago, I really had to come up with this way of eating anti-inflammatory, which at the time for me was to help heal some health issues that I had around my thyroid and some other autoimmune issues. But it allowed me to figure out how can I eat anti-inflammatory in a way that works for my family, whatever my family or whatever your family looks like, and not have to spend extra time in the kitchen, not have to make extra meals for my family just because I'm eating a specific way. And so out of that is how this family fork framework was built that, you know, I, I create recipes and sort of an approach to meal planning that allows you, you know, if you're going to have tacos one night, you can still have anti-inflammatory style tacos, but your family can have regular tacos, the stuff that they are so excited about and used to, and you're only cooking one meal. And so it's been fun to be able to share that with mostly moms who are doing, you know, the the lion's share of the cooking and realizing, gosh, I really need to prioritize my own health and wellness, but how do I do that and how do I balance that? while making sure that my family is not revolting against me when I'm like, hey, you want to have zucchini noodles with your spaghetti, you know, your spaghetti sauce tonight? Nobody, no, kids don't want that. They don't want that at all. So right. there needs to be a better way. Yes. I wish that I had, I had you in my life earlier because I spent 10 years as a vegetarian and I was cooking different meals all the time and it just got stressful. And when I say cooking, I'm not the best cook. So it was not it didn't end up being the healthiest. So I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. One of the things that is obviously really important to to our listeners, the budget part and trying to figure out what foods are going to kind of the most bang for your buck. And you also, you already talked about getting the time back and creating your component cooking. Can you tell us a little bit more about the component cooking? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So creating, if it's okay, let's backtrack a little bit. So let's talk about what anti-inflammatory actually is, because then it leads into why component cooking is important. So anti-inflammatory nutrition is really this approach where we are taking out foods that cause inflammation. And so this is what most people think of. It's like gluten, dairy, soy, sugar, alcohol. A lot of these things need to be taken out because they do promote and increase inflammation. What we often forget about in an anti-inflammatory diet is that we're also adding in things that can help 
combat inflammation. So when we think about that, we're looking at things like fruits and vegetables and, you know, some pro and prebiotic foods, different things that are going to help our body really fight against the inflammation. And so when it comes to my method of what I call component cooking, the idea is that we're making different components. I'm not a huge fan of leftovers. And if you're making anti-inflammatory meals for yourself, but you need to make something different for your family, there's actually a lot of anti-inflammatory ingredients that are going to work for everybody. So, you know, like I had said, tacos, for example, with tacos, you can make the ground beef. Everyone can use that the lettuce, the tomatoes, the onions, the peppers, whatever you're going to put in your taco, that's all pretty standard. And most of it is anti-inflammatory. What isn't is like a corn tortilla is actually, corn's not super great if you're eating an anti-inflammatory diet. And so you can choose an almond flour tortilla or something different, whereas your family is going to have the corn tortilla or the corn taco shell. And so the idea of having these components is just that we're not having one dish meals. There's not a lot of, you know, chili or casseroles or soups and that kind of thing, because it's really difficult to make it so that you can make modifications for your family if they are still eating dairy and, you know, gluten and everything else. So the idea here is that we're just creating these components that can be packaged for a meal. And along with that, if you, I don't have time for meal prep on the weekends. And when I was a single mom, I had even less time. My son, when I was a single mom, my son was very, very busy. He was in lacrosse and he was snowboarding. And all of our weekends were spent on the mountain or at a lacrosse camp or game or something like that. And so with component cooking, what you do is you're actually batch cooking while you're making a meal. So again, in this example of tacos, if you're making tacos, you will double the amount of meat that you make. And say you're doing that on Sunday night, then on Wednesday night, you're going to use that taco, the half of the taco meat for sloppy joes, something totally different. So you're not having any sort of leftovers, but the components allow you to save time in the kitchen and also really maximize if you can get more meat for a lower cost, because usually buying volume is can be helpful. Then uh-huh. all of a sudden you've saved yourself money, you've time, and you've saved yourself the headache of trying to like, what am I going to make? I don't have anything planned. You already have something planned. So if you can kind of cook and batch cook for three nights in a row, you will have enough to pull together very quick and easy meals for the rest of the night or the rest of the week. I love that. I love that a lot. All this talking about tacos too. It's like, can you help me? I know. I like, feel like I feel like tacos is a really good, like a really, it's a really good example. But anytime I've been with with you know friends and family that have you know different dietary restrictions, tacos is a really a really good one. But I love I love the thought of like you're multitasking, but in a good way. So you're like doing the one thing, but you're repurposing, reusing the, you know, the ingredients for, for later on. So you're creating some efficiency for yourself, but you're also keeping yourself from the drive through and all those extra conveniences that can creep in and really just eat at your dollars. No pun intended there, but yeah, but oh, actually this is, <laughs> yeah, this is it, so it, good. it feels a little bit like a science experiment, but it starts to become really easy when you realize that most of your meals are made up of a protein, a veggie and a carb. And so anybody who's listening who has even dabbled with the idea of like eating macro friendly meals or eating your macronutrients, most of our meals are made up that way. And so if you can think, okay, chicken, I can do chicken and I can have it one night where it's grilled, but another night where it's shredded, all of a sudden it changes the texture. It changes how it's going to be presented on your plate. It's something different, but you've already sort of maximized that time in the kitchen on one particular night. And so by looking at your components and just saying, okay, what three proteins can I pick for the week? What two or three carbohydrates and what four or five veggies can I pick? All of a sudden you have this big array of components that can really be put together in a lot of different ways and still help you to sort of achieve and tackle your health and wellness goals while keeping your family happy. I think it's kind of brilliant myself. Yes. I feel like... I feel like I thought I was like, where were you? Where were you earlier? Because uh, this is definitely 
this is one area that I encourage my clients to really like dig into because we have to eat yes. and taking care of ourselves. And this is one of the things that we really connected on um, when we first started talking about doing this episode was the it is it's a small investment now for like, big rewards later when it comes to your health but also your finances because as we as we age and we're um we come up against some things that are just a, a natural part of the aging process and we want to make our or keep ourselves as healthy as possible so that we can have as many years with our family as possible that what we put in our bodies matters it's a, a long term a long term investment so not only does it help us with our health, but then it helps us in the future, you know, against you know prescription costs and medical costs and all of those things that go into just you know, maintaining our bodies the best way we possibly can. Sure. And I just, I really, I think it's so we, for lack of a better term, we just keep kicking the can down the road. You know, we, yeah. we look and we're like, oh, I just, this week is so busy. I'll just, I'll start next week or I'll, sh I'll shop differently over the weekend and I'll, you know, sit down on Pinterest and try and pull up a bunch of recipes. And really that it, it doesn't do us any favors to just keep prolonging this, this situation yeah. where we're not feeding our bodies. Because in with women that I work with, what we find is within about two weeks of eating an anti-inflammatory diet and really focusing on these whole foods, they start to recognize how much more energy they have just in two weeks. Mm. And to see that quick of a turn, imagine if you had more energy, if you are trying to do other yeah. things in your life, you're trying to, maybe you're having a second job, or maybe you're, you know, trying to do more with your family or whatever it is that you're doing in your life, you will have more energy. And that just starts the flywheel in a different way. Instead of, you know, constantly feeling like, oh, I just, I'll do it next week. If we can just start today with small things. And you know, I think the other thing about anti-inflammatory nutrition, again, I said at the beginning, like people think, oh, so it's expensive and I have to eat organic. And to be quite honest, there are not very many things that I do eat that are organic because for my budget, I'm more concerned with just buying whole foods because I think whole nutrient dense food is better for you than organic if that's what you can afford. So I really sure. encourage people to buy what they can afford but to shop from the perimeter of their grocery store where you're going to have fewer processed foods, processed foods just aren't, they're, they're hard on the wallet over time. They actually uh -huh. don't fill you up as much as foods that are just whole, the whole actual foods. And it's, again, like you said, it just hurts us in the long run that as we yeah. age, as, you know, natural aging becomes a part of what our body is experiencing, we need to give ourselves a fighting chance to feel really good. And we can do that by food because you have to eat. So if you have to eat, let's learn how to make really smart, but easy and sustainable choices so yes. that it just becomes a lifestyle. And it's not even, that's why I don't like calling it an anti-inflammatory diet because to me, it's not, it's just, it's a way, it's a way of eating to nourish your body so that you can do all the things that you need to do and more. Yeah. Yes. I, I feel like you just like nailed it. It's controlling the controllable. Like we can, there's a lot of things in life that are out of our control, but this is something that we can take a step, for, a step forward on. So what is the next best step for someone that's like, okay, I'm done talking about this and Ashley's done all the work on Pinterest and coming up with all of these things. So what is the, what's the next best step? If someone's interested in jumping in and uh, doing a little lifestyle change here and maybe get some dollars back in their in their wallet too. Yeah, definitely. So I think one of the things that I see often is that when we think about, okay, I'm going to try and eat healthy this week. We pick a bunch of recipes and we go to the grocery store and we buy all of the ingredients. Guaranteed by Tuesday, you have failed on that plan. Okay. Yes, Tuesday night rolls around and you're like, oh shoot, I, I didn't do that. By Thursday, you look in the, you know, produce drawer and you've got wilted or, you know, rotting spinach. Like it just, it happens because we try and go all in at once. So sure. I really encourage people to pick one new recipe for a week, just one. 
You can be more thoughtful and mindful about what you're having for breakfast and lunch. Maybe you switch a little bit to like some more whole foods or nutrient dense foods. But by looking at, I think starting with one recipe for dinner is a really great place to start. You can get your family bought in on what it is that you're going to make and get everyone excited about, hey, we're going to try this new recipe. Does anyone want to help me cut veggies? Does anyone want to, you know, help me stir something in the pot? Make it sort of a fun family affair. And by just doing one, you're not going to waste money on buying a bunch of things that your family doesn't like, that you don't know how to cook, that goes back Uh where you get to it. Master that one dinner. And then the next week, maybe stick with that one or tack on one more new recipe. I really encourage people to have ultimately this like bank of about four weeks of recipes that you just rotate through. Because in reality, unless you are like a classically trained chef or somebody who truly, truly loves cooking and loves food, and I don't know many of those people out there, it's okay to have, like, you see this at school lunches, right? You see, oh, like every Wednesday is pizza day and every third Friday is routine day. They're doing the same thing. We don't need to have new, new, new all the time. If you want to get started on more of a healthy approach, pick one dinner recipe. I've got a great free guide that I can share too that has some recipe options in there, but pick one and then slowly start to think about, okay, what could I change up for breakfast? Could I add a fruit and take away my bagel? Could I, you know, add some more protein and add some veggies to my breakfast as opposed to just doing like sweets or cereals or something like that. So I think going really slow is probably my biggest advice to anyone who wants to get started. That's good. Yeah, because I'm guilty of that myself. Just going, all right, I'm going to go zero to 60 and then I go back to zero (laughs) real quick. So just picking one one meal. Um, and one of the things that I also suggest too is like, what's your what's your busiest night? Like, don't plan the, to cook that night. Yes. But look at your schedule. If your if your kids have activities in the evenings, what's the one night that you're going to be home? And then pick that one too, because um, I always feel like I set myself up for failure when I'm like, all right, I'm going to do all of the things. So maybe that's a time management thing, and that's a whole other whole other podcast topic, but. Um, no, I think, actually, I love that. that. That's so good. It is time management, but I think that it's that brings up another point that somebody mentioned this to me the other day. She said, oh, actually, I didn't realize that you plan all of your meals on Thursdays. And I do because, again, I don't have time on the weekends for anything. And Fridays, maybe I'm taking off early. Maybe we're going up to the mountains. Maybe we're doing something. So I don't always have that opportunity. So on Thursdays, what I do is I sit down with my calendar for the following week. I do exactly what you said. I look at the days where when do we have dance practice, sports practice, after school activities, and then I figure out which days I'm going to cook and that's it. And I cook my components on those days. Every other day, I'm repurposing those components that we talked about. That way I'm not wasting food and I still have time to live my life. And it feels, and it feels good that I'm not feeling, I think there's a lot of feelings wrapped up into food Mm. and cooking And I know for moms that I work with, and this was me for a long time, is resentment. This resentment of having to cook separate meals or having to, you know, try and figure it out while everyone else is out having fun or doing something after school or after work. And here I am stuck in the kitchen. So I think if we can be proactive by the Thursday before the week, just looking at taking that time. And sort of laying out our plan again, then you you realize, oh, I only have two nights this week or next week that I can cook. I'm only going to buy enough stuff to cook those two nights. Yeah, that's so good because we can waste so much money on buying food that we're not going to eat. And I read a stat recently that we we um, as Americans in general, um, nine hundred dollars a year that we waste just on food that we don't eat, and so. I think about, oh my gosh, there's so many other things we could be doing with that. So yes. uh, this sounds this sounds amazing. So what's the best way for someone to get connected to you if they want to know, the, you're talking about that guide that had some mm-hmm. recipes. Um, what's the best way that someone can connect with you personally? Yep. So I am on Instagram, but it's probably best to find me and the guide um, at my website, which is ashleymalik.com. 
and you can go there and put in your information. I will send you the guide right away and it will come with some other bonus information and some podcasts and some resources. So really yeah. helping you to get set up for an easy approach to cooking and still making it family friendly, which is my goal. I love that. Yes. Yes. Families. We love families here at the Dead Rebel Podcast. So tell me, what's the name of your podcast name so that other people can check that out too, if they're interested in digging in a little bit deeper and learning yes. more about what you offer? Yeah, definitely. So my podcast is called The Family Fork. And again, it's this idea that we can still prioritize as busy moms, our own health and wellness while feeding our family. We just don't all have to eat the same thing. So I definitely invite listeners to to hop on over and there's all sorts of great resources there around different healthy snacks and protein and how much protein to get and just everything that you need to really maximize your time in the kitchen and to feel good with what you're eating. I love this, Ashley. This is so good. I really, really appreciate you being on and sharing your tips and tricks and thanks for doing all the legwork for us so that we can, we can get some time back with our families and make the whole meal planning, meal prepping process so much easier. But I have one more thing before we go. Do you have a dad joke for us? <laughs> yes, I do. So I think I heard this probably a hundred years ago and it will forever be my favorite dad joke. So right. where does the army or where does the general keep his armies? The general keep his armies. In his sleeves. In his sleeves. Oh, that's that is that's a classic dad joke right it's there. So bad. It's so bad, but I love it. I love it. I haven't heard that one, so I can't wait to share that one with my dad. Good. Awesome. Good. I'm so glad. Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate you. And we'll put all that info in the show notes so people can get connected to you and the family fork and find out more about how they can work with you. Sounds amazing. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Debt Rebel podcast. Now, if you want to take your next step, check out my website, JulesTheBudgetNerd.com. That's J-E-W-L-Z, TheBudgetNerd.com. I've created a bunch of resources just for you. So hop on over, check it out, and we can connect more there. If you loved today's episode, I would be honored if you would hit that subscribe button and leave me a review. And remember, every step towards financial independence is a rebellion against debt. So stay strong, keep pushing forward and fight the good fight. Until next time, Debt Rebels, stay resilient.